Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we talk with um, myself, Langard, and Colin from Gradient. And I got Ian over here from Zoberman. And we're going to talk about rocking your data. Data is king. We all know this. It is so important for running your MSP, both in an internal way and how you take care of your customers. So we're here to talk about all of that today. So let me go ahead and introduce you to my wonderful experts. Um, I am Cynthia. I will be here to make light of things and keep these guys on track. <laughs> and um, also I love when people ask questions in the middle of a webinar so I can really try to throw them off their game. So please don't feel like you have to wait until the end to put a question out there, go ahead and put it out. And we do have a couple of polls. So make sure you go ahead and get those answered as well. So first let me introduce you to Ian Richardson, founder and CEO of Doberman Technologies. Hi, Ian. Hey, Cynthia, glad to be here. I'm going to spotlight you real fast. Just tell everybody a little bit about you and why you love data so much and why you were here today to talk with us about this. Yeah, so I'm Ian. I run Dilberman Technologies. We're a Mason, Michigan, right there. Uh, a <laughs> managed service provider. You can always tell someone who's born in Michigan because we navigate by body parts. So California is a little weird. Uh, <laughs> And I love data because that's the that's the crux of what we do. I'll, I'll get into it. You see, I got my flip chart out here and I absolutely am going to do some uh, live graphic presentation on that bad boy. Um, that is awesome. But, uh, I, 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 I hope you have multicolored this. markers. Like I don't want <laughs> I just do. one color. Okay. I do. The facilitator in me would not let me get away without having some multicolored Sharpies. Um, Very good. Yep. All right. Perfect. So like, let's meet Colin Knox in his beautiful pink shirt. He is with Gradient yep. MSP. And tell everybody a little bit about yourself, Colin, and what yeah. Gradient does. Sure. So uh, I'm Colin Knox. I've been in the space a little bit. Um, I think it's bit. been four years since I last made a gut-based decision. Um, that's why I love data. Um, <laughs> at Gradient, we're all about helping MSPs make better decisions. And we do that by fueling you with business data and helping you work best with your business data. So we're fairly new. We're kind of taking a bunch of uh, steps along. Right now, we've got a completely free module of our platform out for MSPs, which helps you clean your data in your PSA. So we're gonna talk a lot today about making good decisions and how to leverage your data. Um, that data is only so good uh, as, as it is if it's clean and accurate. So that's the first thing we offer. And we actually just announced uh, yesterday that the next module we're building is an automated billing reconciliation tool. So to help Ooh. MSPs get rid of that tedious, crappy grunt work that they spend every month reconciling their whole resale stack through to their client contracts. So um, check us out and we'll do some CTA stuff later in the, in the show. I am very excited about that, Colin. I don't know if you know this, but I used to do billing for an MSP, and I know the pain and suffering that that week and a half goes. Yeah. Yep, I took it off Joe's hand when I came to his MSP a long time ago. So very excited yep. to hear about that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, and then we have Joe Alipat, co-founder and CEO of Langard, making it roar. Joe, tell us a little bit about you and what Langard does. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. And Cynthia did work at my previous MSP, and she she uh, ruled the billing data, as well as the data in the PSA for us. And uh, you know, excited to be here. Uh, LineGuard's all about unified visibility and we're about the technology data. So, you know, we think about, uh, I just think about the scene in the matrix where Neo holds up the bullets from the agents and he looks at the agents and it turns into ones and zeros. That's what we're trying to do to all of your technology. Turn it into ones and zeros. You can see everything, you can make amazing decisions. So, so excited to be here and, uh, you know, come from the MSP world, uh, authentically know the problems, uh, just like the, the rest of the crew here about what, what it takes to, to run an IT service operation. I just want to say, Ian looks crisp, Colin looks bright, and I look shiny. Let's do it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and I, of course, look fabulous. I hope you would say nothing less. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm not allowed to say. I might get myself in trouble. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. Joe, I know you're going to start off here with this and how a data creates value at an MSP. Yep. Uh, this, is, this is an important one. You know, this, the whole premise of this discussion is, uh, you know, what we're hearing from the MSP community is so much more focused around data. And you know, we're thinking about the formula for success. And if you look at that middle, that middle row, your business, uh, 
Uh, what your business centers around is the business operations data, which generally sits in the vicinity of the PSA and all of the associated satellite systems that sit around the PSA, the uh, Professional Services Automation Platform, AKA ConnectWise Manage, you know, Datto Autotask, ServiceNow, the list goes on. I know I've missed a couple, let's, let's move on. And then the other side of it is the technology operations side, which is what's going on in all of those systems that you actually signed up to manage your core business, right? That's what you signed up for. And for, for, from my perspective, if you can combine the business operations data with the technology operations data in your business, you are going to be able to have a higher degree of success in creating value to your customer. And so the way this thing is actually pictured, we should probably have an arrow going from the bottom up. You have your suppliers, right? The suppliers are supporting you. You are supporting your customer. And if everyone in that chain is doing something uh, better with their data, you're creating more value for that next layer and more value for the next layer. So you are integral, your suppliers are integral, and you could go to your customer's customer because your customer, if they're not successful, they're not servicing their customer. So this is why we really feel firmly that you got to rock your data. You got to know how to get value out of it. And you got to, you got to be able to drive it upstream, um, you know, to your, your customer uh, and then take it from, from your supplier. So in, in the end, I would love for people to stop talking about supply chains, which is really passive and talk about value chains. How are you providing value forward, pay it forward, rather than thinking about suppliers. That just sounds boring, suppliers. Like, let's talk about value chain. All right, that's what I got. And I think what, what we'd wanna do is have Ian and Colin really dig in and, then, and I'll dig in on these components of value creation. So hand it back to you, Cynthia. All right, um, Colin, I saw you nodding your head a lot. Did you have a, a little more you wanted to add there before we move on? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's... Joe really hit that good. It's all about your value chain and what you're doing. And when it comes to rocking your data, the, the cornerstone of your value chain is the data, right? It, it, we use it in everything we do, whether you realize it or not, with you know micro decisions you're making or just using it to be effective. This is why you know he mentioned the PSA is the the hub. It's your source of truth for most of your most MSPs out there. Um, but realize all the other solutions that integrate into that. So that's either feeding more data in or pulling data out. And then that's, you know, removing redundancy, quicker access to data, you know, being able to pair that with other data that can give you the right insights and information you need. So um, it really is so fundamental to make sure that where you're storing this stuff, you, you understand it, it's managed, you can sort it and, and configure it in a way that's going to best help you moving forward and inform, like Joe said, across not just um, you know, one side of your business on the business or operation side, but then onto the technology and service delivery and, and best practice side as well. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to, to start digging in some more too. All right. And I see you getting your markers ready. I think that means I'm going to move on to the next little slide <laughs> here. And we're going to talk about why data matters to your customers and what difference data can mean and how you take care of your customers. So Ian, take it away. Yeah. So I would, uh, I would challenge everyone to think about this statement up at the top, uh, old, uh, old marketing strategy that is called the universal truth. And I would posit that the reason any of us get retained by a small business is because the MSP is there to help them with their data. And really, if we think about your clients, they don't care about, not really about what widgets you're using, what software you're putting in, what desktops you're selling them, how their servers are built, whether they're cloud or premise or anything. They care about their data. That's why they have computer systems. That's why they have software. That's why they invest in your services is they've got a bunch of data and they need to use it. And really there is the triangle of how that client sees value. And up here at the top. Oh, he, he busted out his second color. Getting serious. <laughs> I would think about access. This is about them having the ability to access their data and be able to use their data in a way. I'm going to unmirror my video. 
for them to be able to <laughs> use, their, use their data in an effective way to service their customers, make money, deliver value for their shareholders. They need to be able to get into their data, use their data when they want to use it. And so that's reliability and access. Down here, you've got security. And even if people are pushing back on your security play, they really do care about their data security. They only want the people they want to have access to the data to have access to it. And that's the lens through which they look at things. They don't want their data out there on the internet. They don't want their employee records out there on their internet. They don't want their financial statements or their strategic plan, their big idea core strategies to be published out for the competition. So they care about that data security. And then this bottom corner is really around backup. They don't want to lose their data. Those three things, access, backup, and security are the crux of the technical data of uh, what people are caring about, what people, why people are retaining the MSP. So you think about us. This is the balance. And this is what the MSP delivers. It's that dot right there, right in the middle of the triangle. So I'm, I'm going to call you Professor Ian from now on. This, 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 this is awesome. Professor. Yeah, I mean, it's this is either that or you're a politician. One of the two, you know, you got the dry erase and you got the thing going. I love this because, um, you know, you're tying into something um, that I've been telling my team sometimes is draw pictures sometimes, make it simple to understand what's important. And a lot of times it's three things, right? And, and just like, what are the simple three things to keep in mind? I love that concept of Rule three. Uh, you know, access, security, and backup. The rule of three, this is what they care about, right? This is what they're always asking us to do for them is make sure I can get in, make sure it's safe, make sure I don't lose it. Mm -hmm. so we put a little dot in there with software and hardware and services and configuration and policy and process. That's what we bring is we sell them balance. Whenever they do something, this dot goes in a direction. And then when they spend money, with us it goes back in the middle so they want to work from home sure you've got access from anywhere but now we got to spend money on securing that work from home and making sure that we don't have a continuity problem now we're back in the middle that's what just happened over 2019 and 2020 that's why a lot of msps grew after q2 and grew at a fairly robust pace because there was that spend after the access was established for work from home, there was a spend on security and continuity strategy that pulled us back into the middle and people started growing through a pandemic. Hey, Ian, I've got a question for you on the, uh, where's the data at? So like, you know, we're, we've got customers who sometimes are on premise, you know, you know, we've got everything local, you got some in the cloud, some hybrid. So in your case, what, where do the customers keep all the data? Well, so that's, that is where this technical data comes in, right? What is their infrastructure? What does it look like? And you have to have a clear picture on every part of the customer's environment. And this is where you do have to rely on a partnership with a, with a partner like Gradient and LionGuard to be able to help you get that aggregated data. If they've got email in the cloud and they have a hosted line of business application and a legacy SQL application and they've got hybrid active directory. So some of it's in Azure and some of it's down still on a premise domain controller. And they have two different file synchronization and sharing programs, one with a major client and then the internal one that they're using inside the organization. You got seven different disparate systems that you need to monitor, manage, audit and secure and back up. And all of that is difficult on a good day. And yeah. more often than yeah. not in small business, it's not necessarily a good day, especially at 8 a.m. when you come in and the phone's ringing. Yeah. So. Well, I, I love your question there too, Joe. And, and where is that data? Because the other thing, when you look at how, how Ian answered that is, you've got all these disparate systems. You've got different places that the data lives, even across your client bases. Some will be in the cloud, some will be on-prem, some will be in a different cloud, all of these different things. 
maybe if you had the data in your PSA and you could start to correlate and take a look at and understand, hey, what's my technical support burden or ticket count for clients who have on-prem? Am I doing more recoveries? Am I spending more time managing it? Am I you know, having to spend more money on security or do we have innate built-in security in some of the cloud solutions? So where can you make it simpler to keep that access and security as available but, but making the time that you're spending on it and your efficiency in de ultimately delivering what Ian says you need to be delivering to your clients as easy as possible on you. I think the other thing I'm hearing there too is that when you have access to that data, right, with all of these different customers, now you can compare some things and how, what they're using and, and all of that and actually make the sale, sell to them. Say, look, I, when you're running all this on-prem instead of moving to the cloud, which might sound scary to some small businesses because they don't understand what it is, you can actually make that sale because you can show with your data how much better those systems might be running. So true. So true. Very yeah. cool. So Ian, um, so, any other thoughts on oh, customer? Yeah. You, oh you yeah. Nailed it right on the hat, right <laughs> on the head. If you look at the business operations data and you think about where am I today? Where could I be? And this thing in the middle, this middle, this gap is the value that your customer can see. And this is what sets us all apart from the guy who's trunk slamming down the road and not paying attention to your customer's business problems. And ask yourself and be able to answer, how does the client make money? How do they grow? What are the risks and the opportunities? And Colin just, just scratched at this. If you're doing analysis across your base of clients and saying, hey, on average, I've got 100 clients and the ones that have embraced a cloud strategy or the ones that have centralized on either Microsoft or Google solutions or whatever, the ones that are fully embracing these pieces of our stack, the ones that are doing these intentional actions have less support requests and less impacts to their productivity. The ones that buy our security stack do not have security incidences and are not taken down and, uh, and lose days of productivity, the ones that have our backup solution don't have data loss events, you can paint a picture of that future state for your customers and say, hey, my understanding is that this is how we make money. This is how you grow. Did you know that there's an opportunity to gain productivity by embracing these technologies? If we start using this part of the cloud solutions you're already buying, you can gain this collaboration benefit. You can gain this efficiency benefit that can help you get from where you're at to where you want to go. There are these risks we can eliminate by taking you to the cloud or by investing in this backup solution or by putting in this security or whatever the case may be. And here's the data that proves it. Here's you and here's where you could be. Doesn't this look better? And suddenly those cost objections evaporate. And you get people to start embracing the stack, start moving forward. And it's because you're conversing with them about what they care about. What are your goals? What are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, threats? How do we get you there? And how can we help you capture your data? You're an MSP. You support hundreds of businesses. You absolutely know more about what technical success looks like than your client. That's why they hired you but you have to talk to them in a way that they understand. And that's about business goals and objectives, not about technology widgets and nuts and bolts. Well, it all, it all comes down to why does this matter to me, right? What, what's in it for me? And one of the best ways to sell anybody on anything is by proof and case studies. This will work for you because this has worked for other people. And if you're not comfortable going and asking your clients to make those testimonials, fill out those case studies, do whatever, use your data. We implemented these solutions for these unnamed clients of ours, and here's how their, you know, uptime went. Here's how their mitigation went. Here's how, you know, their ticket, uh, you know, average ticket count went down. They're spending more time doing what they do in business and less time asking us to fix and do other things for them. You know, those, those are built-in case studies that you already have, and it's probably reports that you're looking at to understand how you're doing for your clients, you know make that available so that you can share that out to your, to your other clients and help move them along the line so that you can keep increasing your value with them. 
I love I love the the concepts here. You know, Ian's talking about digging in with the customer and and really trying to understand their problem. You know, uh, Colin, you're talking about celebrating the wins, right? Case studies. You gotta you gotta bring proof. Uh, and and one thing that I'd love to add, just to probably close this slide out, is um, our first core value is listen and learn at Lion Guard, and and it's something that's so important. I would challenge you all to ask this question to every one of your uh, customers the next time you meet with them. Uh, ask that business owner, what do you consider your most business critical system and where does your most business critical data sit? And I, you might be surprised what that answer might be. Just ask the open-ended question. Don't fill it. There might be an uncomfortable silence. Just sit quietly and see what they say. And they might say something. And the, the cue that might be of interest is if they mention a system that you're not managing for them, go lean in, lean in hard. And, and really determine like, oh wait, it's in that SQL Server database sitting over there, or it's in this Salesforce system over here, or you know, how can you be part of the value creation game? Go to where that CEO is thinking about their critical data, right? And help them give access, help them provide security and, and make sure those backups are running. So sweet stuff. And one other thing that just sort of crossed my mind too, I mean, sure this is, the answer is probably pretty obvious, Ian, but my assumption would be that with all of this rich data information, yes, you can help your current clients and maybe get them into a better, safer, you know, situation, but how's this also working when you're looking at prospects and trying to make that sale of you as your MSP? I'm sure that that value of your data, everything that you can show is helping you make those sales. Well, so that's, uh, that's really when you talk about the way that you prospect, that conversation around where are they at and where could they be. Everyone's talking to you for a reason and focus on those reasons. Hey, tell me what's going on. Why did you wanna take my phone call today? Why are we sitting here? And they'll share with you their pain, but then taking that pain and understanding it and using your knowledge based off of your current customers so that at the appropriate time during discovery, you can shift from asking questions and validating and clarifying and quantifying those pain points and the impacts on their business to saying, well, we've had 20 clients that looked like you and had mm -hmm. these sorts of challenges. And through a process, what if I told you I could eliminate that downtime while giving you the access and solving this other tangential business problem that you mentioned, which will improve your revenue and help you hit that 10% growth goal you have? Would that yep. bring value? Would that make a difference? Would that be better? Asking those questions and letting them get to their own yes. You have to be able to use data and use your experiences and your understanding of the customer to lead them down the path and dig deep into those problems, not just, well, our, our IT guy doesn't respond. Okay, well, so he doesn't respond. How often do you have problems? You have two problems a day. How big are those problems? Well, they take someone down for the day. What's your average payroll? Well, it's $50 an hour. What's your average productivity from a billable resource? It's $500 an hour. Okay, well, let's do some math. Suddenly you monetized a problem and that's just one problem. And then you can dig into security issues and backup issues and data, and data continuity issues. And you really, really can dig deep really fast by having that business-based discussion to understand. And then all it is is reaching back in, just like Colin and Joe mentioned, pull into your current base and talk about how you could bring a solution there. And they're gonna, they're gonna be chomping at the bit to work with you. Do you think I understand your needs? Would you like my help? That's great. Okay, I think we could probably talk about this all day, but let's go ahead and move on into uh, business operations. Um, and I know, Colin, this is where you're going to get real jazzed up, you and Bill. What can you tell us I know, about? I feel so <laughs> underwhelming now since I don't have a board behind me to draw on, but maybe I'll just get a like a hand puppet of, of Phil or something. <laughs> but, like <laughs> <laughs> My marketing team oh, hates me. Um, <laughs> well... <laughs> um, yeah, it, well, it's so funny, right? Because we'll, we'll kind of tie some of the stuff that Ian was talking about here is, is he's talking about all these things and ways that clients and your clients need to leverage data and protect data and have access to data, right? I missed that now. 
What did Joe um, do? Joe oh, Joe's got a board behind him. You know, just bringing it in. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dang, Dang it. Going, Colin. Sorry. Dang it. <laughs> I got nothing. All right. Um, seriously. But but all of the ways that, that your clients are needing to access, it's all the same stuff that you do, right? Like, we, we can't get caught in, like, the cobbler paradigm here where, you know, we're so focused and, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's the cobblers or the barista, right? What What's the last thing a barista wants to do when they get home? Make a cup of coffee, right? The worst cared for networks and IT systems are MSPs, their own, right? Because they're so busy taking care of clients and, and not watching their own. And that started to shift and change. Well, now we've been doing so much to help advise and this VCIO and stuff for our clients. And Ian just dropped a wealth of data and, and insight there. But what about all these things that you're not doing and watching and, and taking a look at in your own business, right? You're so busy doing all these other things. And we harp as vendors and other influencers and thought leaders in the industry about working on your business, not in your business and, and doing all of that stuff. And the first thing is you can't grow and scale your business if you don't understand how your business is doing. And that's not simply, you know, the basic numbers of revenue, profit and year over year or quarter over quarter growth. This is starting to dig deeper so that you can look at things like, where can I make some incremental improvement, right? There's more refined numbers that, that can lead, that you can watch that lead to a stronger organization over time, right? If you're looking at some metrics like profitability per customer or per contract, cut profitability and revenue growth per product line, right? Not just at that big top number about what you're doing. What's impacting those numbers? Where are you maybe not profitable? That's bringing that top line profit or that, you know, the, the top profit number down. Where could you have an impact and boost on that, right? Taking a look at some of the other things like your service desk metrics and, and finding out where you can improve productivity across your team. We already talked about some of that. Hey, holy crap, if I moved everybody into this cloud data storage solution, I would have this many less tickets. And then my team could focus on these other supplemental services and ways to improve my business, right? And keep driving more value to your clients, which drives up your profit and moves you forward. When, when you start to dig in deeper and dig deeper, you can start seeing things like changes in your, your client demand over time. So we already said, like, how many tickets are they doing? But what types of tickets are they asking you about? Where is the time going on a per client or, or aggregate method, right? Having a better idea of, are, are we getting questions and tickets around something that we're not even offering? Maybe we can have a better idea of what to sell. So people are asking for a more comprehensive cybersecurity package. They're saying more and more, well, hey, should we be looking at this? Or do we back this up? If you're getting tickets to, to, to do data recoveries, let's say on a system, that is the CEO's, you know, that's my most valuable data. That's my most valuable system. And you're not backing that up because you never thought about it or that's not our problem. That's the vendors, you know, the other software vendors problem. No, make it your problem, establish that value and find out, hey, we can start backing that up for you and taking care of that. Whether it's a cloud to cloud backup solution, whether that's, you know, I remember in our MSP, we did little things. We actually ran little dump scripts and then wget commands. And this is like old batch type crap, but we did that. And then that wrote to a, a USB drive that they now had an offline backup of their most pivotal systems that they were using that were on hosted, you know, Citrix only type systems, but you could create all of that drive value and protect those clients and then monetize that, right? You know, when, when you start to look at, you know, that's, that's on service delivery and business operations and profitability metrics, then you have kind of, we'll call it on the CRM side and your sales and marketing, right? Getting a handle on and understanding what your conversion rates are. What, are, what numbers are you seeing when it comes to your, your sales success and close ratios, your ability to bring prospects down the funnel through different stages of your pipeline and understanding and being able to then optimize, oh, wow, if we jump from like meeting one to, to delivering a proposal in meeting two, we've got a way lower close rate than if we nurture that along a little bit more, maybe do a couple other fact finding missions, go in and do that network assessment and use LionGuard to collect a whole bunch of insights and data for us and do whatever, that actually increases the, the, the close rate because 
they're getting a better relationship with us. They're trusting us more. They see the effort that we're putting into this client. Like there's all these little things that you can start to watch and see that you can improve your conversion rates from stage to stage and then from prospect to, to customer. And then even with your customers, who do you have the highest success rate with when you're pushing out new offerings and new services as, as it comes to like an adoption? So as you start to get a handle on understanding where your numbers are and some of the neat things that you can look at and establish, that allows you to start playing with different variables in your business to, to do some trial and error and some testing and, and find what the right pathway is for you to be, be more successful and, and keep growing it over time. You know, this is where you can stop looking for those big magic pills. It's like, this is the one thing that's going to double my revenue. And you can find 10 things that have a 10% impact on your business and move it forward. Those are easier to implement. They're easier to manage through. And if any one of them fails, guess what? You missed out on a 10% growth, but your other 90% of things that you're doing are pushing that, that bucket forward. So that's the end of my rant at, or hype speech <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. But I'm pretty passionate about business data. Oh, it's so hilarious to hear you talk about it because I go back to before line guard my MSP days and it makes me so dissatisfied, right? About the things that, you know, what Ian is speaking to, Colin, what you're speaking to, things that I'm seeing now. I love your third item, track changes in high level metrics. And this is one of the biggest, uh, if, you, if you're an EOS company, by the way, like if you run EOS, if you run any type of business process, you generally come back to KPIs or some type of metric or scorecard and it's so tough to figure out, well, what do I measure? What my suggestion to you is pick something, right? Just start with something, yeah. measure it. And I love that third thing, track changes over time because you really start to understand and then you fine tune and you go, well, maybe that wasn't the right metric. I need to measure this metric. And the way that, that I love to think about it is the journey of your customer. Start at the beginning where they're a prospect and follow them through. And then they're gonna go through an infinity loop where they're gonna continue and hopefully continue their relationship with you. If you have metrics that measure that journey, then you are surely going to be able to identify areas yeah. for improvement. And you're going to be able to do this thing, identifying opportunities and well, you know, maybe it, tweaking costs. It, it's so important, right? Like if you if you think about it, if you if you looked at your, you know, this was our revenue and our profit in in 2020, and now this is our revenue and profit in 2021. Let's say you had a huge spike and huge growth in one of those. Do you not wish you knew what you did that caused the biggest part of that spike? Or do so you, you just want to be like, it? sweet, yeah. sweet, we, we grew. No, like I went through, I posted about, I went through this whole like weight loss journey over the last year. And if I had not been tracking weight every week and kind of the different things that I tried, I'd be like, awesome, I lost all this weight. This is great. No, I want to know what, what caused the biggest impact so that I can do that over and over. Or so that if other people ask me, I can just say, hey, don't worry about all this other crap. Do this right? And, and that's going to be your success. That's what you can do for your business in moving it forward. And then to Ian's points, that's what you can do for your clients. You, you go through all that trial and error with your clients of what's going to have the best impact with them. Monitor each, you know, all these, all these changes over time and the metrics of what your clients are doing, and then attribute it back to the technological changes or implementations or adjustments that you made for them. So you can then go and take that to your other clients and be like, holy smokes, guys, I found the magic pill here it is. Um, so yeah, I think that it, it's so important and we get so, so stuck on these vanity metrics of just what the revenue and profit is or what the growth rate was. And I don't know, like I'm, I'm kind of sick of looking at all these MSP lists out there. That's just like, Oh, you grew X percent. Yeah. But how was profit adjusted over that time? You know, how was headcount? Did he I would care. I wouldn't care. Like I'd consider an MSP more successful if their revenue was flat their headcount went down, but their profit went up. You know, that's, that's more successful to me. So it's, it's not just looking at the straight vanity metrics, but, but all together how those work and, and what influenced those over time. Uh, Colin, you know, a great metric we measure around that is annual recurring revenue per FTE, right? That is a mm. very good metric to monitor. How much annual recurring revenue are you making or MRR are you making every month Per head count. And when you do the math on that, that number doesn't lie, just like what Colin's saying. And it's going to tell you how efficient your operation is. And that's a really interesting one. Are, are, your, are your folks able to do more? Are they able to deliver more value, uh, drive net new revenue? And, and is that getting better or is it getting worse? Right. And maybe there's reasons why it does get worse 
temporarily because you're trying to do something you're leaning into you're investing time and money into marketing that takes some time for it to develop and that's okay but know the why and that's i think that's what colin you're, you're trying to dig into like what's the reason don't just look at the vanity metric go one step lower look for the why. yeah all right now ian i'm interested what what did you write up there on your fresh sheet of paper Oh, I just, uh, I'm a math guy. I'm always, uh, I'm always doing math. I'm always a numbers guy. Um, Tell us, professor. Hey, professor. <laughs> oh, this is professor that, that, that micro, that micro kind of example that you can then expand out. If you think about your customers and how, and how they will have the same challenge. No business is unique. Just as we all struggle with reconciliation and making sure things are building are built properly so we are customers so that's the lens through which I, I ran through this but if you think about the average msp filling 150 bucks a month per user and it's a thousand user msp if you're run-of-the-mill guy it's one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month of, of recurring revenue it's safe to assume that you're going to have about a 3% change in your customer base over the course of the year. That's about 30 users or two to three users a month. If you're missing tracking those users, if for some reason your data isn't coming back in and you don't have visibility into that, that's three to $450 a month. Rule of 78 tells you that you're losing out on 23 to $35,000 over the course of the year. And that stacks year over year over year over year. You might be leaving twenty three to thirty five grand on the table. And, and that's you, just one customer. No, uh, that's across the base, right? That's a three percent okay. across the base of this MSP. They're missing out on billing for thirty yeah. users over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. If you think about how you can try to help your customers find the money on the table, how can I help you? Just bill for things you're already doing. You've got the costs and you just weren't billing the revenue. How can I help you find ways to bill the revenue for the work you're already doing, Mr. Customer? And you get them that 23 to 35 grand and there's zero reason why you can't give them some of that and keep some of it for yourself for the service. Did, and did I mention that we're, we're doing a billing reconciliation tool? Uh -huh. yes, yes. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or not. There you go. I'm like, there's your softball. <laughs> there's your softball, right? But think of like thinking about that data aggregation, right? Where totally. the incremental improvement, <laughs> that second point is the big one that I want to drive home, right? That second point, where is that 1%? How can you help your customer build 1% more revenue or a half percent more revenue each time? Every, uh, every, every, every month, how can you help them get that 1% revenue increase or that 1% increase per day in efficiency, something like that, so that their business supercharges? I think uh, one of the things that um, uh, I love about what Ian just covered there is number of users under management. So many MSPs have moved to, to user-based and your revenue model is actually based on those users. And sometimes we have metrics around number of companies that we manage, but really, well, what's driving your revenue is actually the number of users. And one thing I, I love to say is, well, if your revenue is driven based on users, make sure you find businesses that are growing their headcount. And if you lean into growth focused businesses, guess what's going to happen to you? Tailwinds, it's it's called compound annual growth. And it just yeah. happens, right? You, so you, find those companies that are growing. You took my tidbit, man. Oh, I was going to no. say the metric, another metric you should be watching is number of users per client per year and how that changes over the year. Um, you know, whether it's month over month, quarter over quarter, because yeah, the ones with the highest growth rates um, on a consistent basis, them's the ones that you wanna be getting a little bit closer to. And, and that was one of the things we did with our MSP. We watched user count over, over what well, we did month to month and quarter to quarter. We saw early on, we had this client that started out as 10 employees. And we started to see that they were adding about five employees a quarter. Then that started to accelerate to 10 and to 15. Well, guess what we did? We went and had a big meeting with them and said, what are your growth plans? Where are you guys headed? And they said, oh, okay, we're Canadian. So I'm going to list out a bunch of Canadian cities, but we're opening up an office in Edmonton. We're doing one in Vancouver. We're acquiring a company in Toronto, one in Montreal. And then we may come south of the border. And I was like, okay, that's totally awesome. 
what did I do? I went out and made partnerships with MSPs, good MSPs in every one of those cities. And then I, I opened an office in another one of those cities. So we aligned ourselves with their growth and went along. And we just went right up for the ride with them the whole way. Um, so it's, it's little things like that that you can find and clue into. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's where the QBR, your, your periodic business reviews, are your best source of revenue a lot of times, you know, it's like there, it's easy money if you just have the conversation and reach for the opportunity, just have the conversation, ask them what they're struggling with, which company are they about to acquire? And if you don't ask, they actually won't volunteer the information sometimes and they forget what you're capable of. It's so crazy sometimes they're just like, oh, you do that? Like, how did you not know that we do that? <laughs> really? And you just gotta put yourself out there. So it's awesome. Well, I think y'all segued us uh, perfectly into our, our next point we want to talk about. So like, obviously we see how important data is, um, how much it can help drive business um, and keep you more organized internally. Um, but where to get started? Like maybe you haven't been taking care of your house inside, or maybe you haven't been having these QBRs and talking in detail with your clients, um, or you're struggling to make those sales. So where do we get started? Uh, well, did we do the poll? Did that, did that happen? I did. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Let yeah, me share what, the poll what's the we'll results of the poll? Let's see what happens. All right, I'm going to share the results. So how many customers do you have under management? So it looks like the winner is 10 to 99 customers with one to nine or 100 plus, um, both at 18%. And then hand over heart, are you wearing pajamas right now? <laughs> looks like most people got dressed at 55%, but I think we you know, might have some pajama pants uh, going on in a couple of households. Um, <laughs> And yes, and then some people are just didn't even get to their business on top. I guess they probably are keeping their cameras off today. <laughs> I'm putting my hand on my heart and I am not wearing pajamas. I'm sorry. I, I think Ian is though. He's got that suit and he's got shorts or something. I don't know. Like he's, he's pulling all uh -oh. of this. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. All right. You don't <laughs> sleep in your Lion Guard shirt, Joe? Oh, uh, yeah, this is my 90 right Come here. Come on, man. I sleep with the lions, man. So You got to uh, eat, right. breathe, and sleep lion guard. That's the... I will, I will say that I am wearing slippers, though. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> good you got to mix it up. No, it's awesome. So that based on that poll, it uh, sounds like we're all, uh, where some of us are living the work from anywhere life. And, uh, you know, when we think about the different stages of the uh, MSP journey, we think about emerging when you're you know, managing one to nine customers, you're growing, when you're 10 to 99 and you're established, when you have 100 plus, and we find that there's different challenges you face along that journey. And it's interesting, the conversations go in different directions uh, when, when we're talking to, to folks at those different stages. So it's great to thank you for giving us that feedback, everyone. And really, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm here to talk to you selfishly about the technology data, right? What did you <laughs> sign up for? If, you're, if you are an MSP, or an IT service provider, you signed up to manage the technology for your customer and you are their digital or IT Sherpa, you're their advi trusted advisor, whatever term you wanna use. Um, I like to think you're Yoda, we'll get into that later, but I think it's really important to think of it that way. And, and when, you, when you think about this, the best role models eat their own dog food. They not only, you know, they, they, don't, only, they don't just talk the talk, right? They walk the walk. And what that means is you can't do what Colin said, cobbler's kids thing. Man, that was a phrase we used to use. That it, like I, I used to hear my team members say that sometimes. And it, oh God, I was grinding my teeth. I'm like, I gotta, we can't be doing this cobbler's kids business. And I'll give you an example. We were super early on in Microsoft 365 and I'll age myself here to be paused and, and the earlier versions of Microsoft 365. And we hadn't adopted it and we were trying to sell it. And the moment we adopted Microsoft 365, right, or Office 365 from back then, it, it, we just suddenly were able to sell it because we ate our own dog food. We authentically knew what Microsoft was trying to bring to the table by moving things to SaaS. And that's my, that's my uh, you know, plea to all of you is you, if you're going to create value for your customer, if you want them to do more with their data, if you want them to be successful, show them how to do that by running your business in a way that you can flex. You can even tell them, hey, let me show you what we're doing over here, right? We got this PSA, everything's organized. It's integrated in this manner. I use these metrics to analyze my business. And on the technology side, which happens to be my core business, maybe yours is healthcare, maybe it's legal, whatever it is, right? Ours is technology. 
here's how we manage the technology of the business uh, or the data um, around the technology. And so the thought process is when we're trying to create value, you've got your business operations and an MSP world, you have your core competency, which is the technology operations. And what Langard loves to talk about is that thing I mentioned about, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves, Neo doing that thing in the matrix where he's looking at the agents like they're ones and zeros. What if you could think about all of the systems you manage, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on the network or the endpoint, work from home while you're wearing your PJs, you are able to query all of that instantaneously. You're able to get to the answers you need and you're able to then integrate that data into reports that you're delivering to your customer, right? Because you wanna bring your A game. You are there to prove that you are better than internal IT. How are you doing that? You have to show visible progress. And what that means is you have to think about, you know, this is a term that's old, but you know, not managing uh, technology like pets, right? You gotta manage it like cattle, right? It's a little impersonal but you've got to herd the cats or herd the cows and you've got to bring it together and think in terms of scale. So uh, if you slide forward uh, to the yeah. next slide, uh, Cynthia, mm -hmm. I'll show you just kind of a, a quick snapshot, a basic one, which how many of y'all have had the horrible story, right? Where you have let an SSL- <laughs> You haven't even finished from... the question and Ian is already like, yeah. Big two, two hands, like, yes, two hands up. Happened. It is the worst. <laughs> like, and I still see this. People are managing SSL cert expiration sometimes with calendar reminders and spreadsheets. And you know, this is before some of the tools that have it. You know, do it. This is a very light example. This, by the way, this is lightweight stuff. But I'm giving you a basic example: is that when you manage hundreds or thousands of things, it is not easy. We have to soak in that. It's not easy. What are you going to do? Automate, please. Please do not use a spreadsheet. Please do not use calendar reminders. Use something like LionGuard. Use a solution that does that for, for whatever you do. Please automate this because asking your team to do this manually is killing them. And every time they have egg on their face, when the customer says this magical quote, that's what I thought I hired you guys or gals about. You know, like that's what I that's what I hired you for. How could you let this happen? It's just such guilt that you have when it happens. You're like, yeah. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for that three hour outage on your website, your front door to the world. Oh my God. Or other things that are terrible, right? Put an end to that madness. It's 2021. Colin, you're about to say something. I am. I'm, I'm, like I'm jumping. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. Eh. Well, it's so funny, right? So we, we talk about things like business continuity all the time. What about the concept of value continuity? Right. Yeah, you might have a term contract with your clients for one year, two year, three years out, whatever it is you do. Right. You need to not just prove the value you can deliver at the beginning, but ongoing. And it's back to like, I don't know, Wolf of Wall Street type thing. Right. Don't judge me by my wins. Judge me by my losses because there's so few. Right. You need to make sure your losses are so few because they're not going to remember, oh, we were up all the time oh, our system runs so fast. No, what they notice is the anomaly, right? Yeah. Our stuff went down. It's really slow. Our domain was not renewed. You need to focus on those things and you need to make sure that that value continuity keeps going on and on and on um, and leveraging tools, leveraging data, leveraging things, yeah, other than your calendar uh, reminders, your task <laughs> list, notepads, spreadsheets. You can't get by that way anymore. And there's the other thing is that you can't correlate data that's living in all these different disparate systems. If you bring it together into one system or just a couple systems, then you have the ability to overlap it, to look at it, see trends, see what's happened, see what's not happened, um, to really guide your way forward. That's awesome. Ian, did you, you were kind of uh, raising your hand. Any stories there? Oh, just you started talking about uh, domain expirations, and I got taken back to the bad old days, and uh, I, I wanted to just like no, <laughs> never happened. Me, I was always forget. I was always perfect. I never had you know multi day outages because not only was the did the domain expire, but nobody could find the password, and the person who registered it left the company five years ago, and who knows where they're at, and that became a nightmare. So. Yeah, and, and it's so funny, right? It's, it seems like something basic. And to an end user, they're thinking, God, this seems so basic. Why can't you do this? And the reality is, you know what? I'm not going to speak to you and pontificate about do better unless I've got a solution for you. Sign up for LionGuard, right? And if you don't, <laughs> sign up with something that manages expirations of domains and TLS search. That is the most basic thing 
that you need to just move on. You know, that, that ship has sailed. You better have a solution for that and, and move on to the next thing. Colin, you're raising your I'll, hand. I'll give, I'll give another vouch for this because you guys do change tracking, right? And I don't know, the first, the first uh, I guess, basic version of collective intelligence I ever learned or saw was every MSP I've ever met has had an experience where a marketing or a web dev firm has built a new website unbeknownst to you for the client because you're not the marketing company. And then they hijacked control of DNS and the domain and moved it over to their registrar. And all of a sudden, MX was forked. And all you get is a call that says, hey, our email's not no, working, no, and I don't think it's been working all day. What the heck did you do? Mm. And you start trying to troubleshoot. You're checking M365. You're checking all of these things. Well, I think there's a thing where LionGuard could just say, hey, there's been a change to the MX record here, guys. Yeah. Like, that's the issue. Oh, it's those guys. Like, wherever you can mitigate your risk, wherever you can do stuff, right? Like, but it, it's learning from past experience and being able to move forward with it that way. Um, and, and put mitigative efforts and, and tools in place to get rid of that. But yeah, um, I mean, domain expiry was one, but I think we only needed to get our butts kicked twice over MX changes by marketing oh, yeah. companies before That's we the locked all the That's domains. The and the fear that you have that you don't know what was in DNS before. And, and you know, Colin mentioned something that's in our, it's not in the slide, but there's a timeline that you can rewind time. It goes back to what Colin said. You got to trend these things over time. We believe in that you should be able to see the history of the configurations of everything you're managing. That's what LionGuard is doing. If, if you don't have that, please talk to us, talk to somebody else, find something that does this because it's so important for you to be able to rewind when that event happens to know what was DNS before that change. That is, that is running a legit operation better than internal IT. And you know what? It's going to save your butt. And we've heard so many stories about people who are like, oh, hey. man, that turned into a three-minute outage. Ian, oh, yeah. Ian actually had a horrible phone call from a very large client um, that, you know, something broke. Website had been down. And he, I'll, Ian, I'll let you tell the story because you're probably going to tell it better. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to dive into that. Um, and, and it's a twofold thing here. Um, and so don't, don't let me forget to talk about the compliance implication in the play there. But... We had, a, we had a fairly large healthcare practice as a 16 provider practice and each provider's take home was a half million dollars a year. So that kind of puts into play like just how big of a revenue organization this was and, and how much an hour of downtime impacted their uh, impacted revenue and impacted the healthcare of the community. And uh, they, had a, they had a primary vendor that went in and someone went in and made a change on the database, the SQL database server and caused an outage of the system. And so much change, this, this client had been set up originally without split applications. So the server that hosted this application that was down also was a database server for multiple other applications. And we get the call, hey, we're down, we're looking into it, diagnosed that something had been changed. And that took about 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, the window of, hey, well, maybe we could roll back a snapshot, something like that. We could look at a backup fail back. That's long gone. Like, the change has to be undone. And nobody knew who made the change. Client is breathing down the neck every 10 minutes that goes by that this system is down is a massive amount of lost revenue potential to them. We were able to use LionGuard to say, well, all right, let's look at what happened on the SQL server. We know we have LionGuard pulled it, pointed at it and pop back and back through the audit change logs and say, hey, here's what it is. It was this user, it came from here. This is what happened. Popped into the, into the uh, VPN control to pull, like where was the originating uh, VPN source from that, went out to the vendor and said, hey, it was this user from this IP address, get them on the phone and see what they did. And that allowed not only the system to get rolled back, but it changed the conversation from the client being upset with us because the system was down to, thank God we have you. Is there any system that isn't monitored in this way? So it turns- Ooh. Conversation to a value conversation, yeah. and uh, Important. Th that that like that helped retain. Sure, that helped me retain sixteen thousand dollars a month because that could have been a relationship-ending uh, mm. conversation. 
But the real critical piece of this was that we then were able to have a conversation with that client around the compliance aspects. Well, of course, we're monitoring this for you. Were you aware that you're subject to CFR 45, HIPAA for the uninitiated, and it requires us to do this. You are required to do this. Why don't we have a conversation about every system you're using and if you're doing this or not? And that landed a $2,500 a month upsell for compliance auditing services through LionGuard. Oh, that's so awesome. I didn't know about that part of the story. That's, that's, that's a cherry on top. Um, you know, I, I, think that, I think that concept of having access to that data is, is important when it comes to technology side. You can obviously see that uh, Ian and, and Colin believe it. The same thing applies to your business data and thinking about it for your customers. Um, you know, there was another slide there previously that showed Azure, but you want to turn everything into data. There it is. And you should be able to report on it, like what's shown here. There's a timeline. You should be able to rewind on it. And what that does is it ultimately gives you the answers and the insights to get to outcomes like what Ian said. And that may be saving a customer. Uh, it might be getting them to a solution very quickly and then root causing it because, you know what, life's too short. You can't be running around with a cliff falling out behind you. You need to be able to rewind that time and go, what the heck was back there, right? Because you can't expect tech to document everything. Uh, and so moving on. The, the analogy, wait, first, Cynthia is going to do an impression. Cynthia, let's hear your impression. Value you have. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that was, was decent. Good. I, that was decent. I can't, I can't even compete. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> um, the, so the, the thought process here is, look, you're, you are Yoda. Like that's, I just want you to understand that, that you are Yoda. Yoda, I am. You, yes, Yoda, I am. And <laughs> you are trying to coach Skywalker, and that is the CEO of your customer to be a better CEO, to deliver uh, digital transformation for the, his or her team members to uh, get past obstacles so they can get the insights and outcomes. You can be that person and, and let's, let's go beyond trusted advisor, right? Let's, let's really lean in here on really helping our customers around this journey, right? So they can go from data to insight to outcome. And guess what? The work from anywhere environment is a huge challenge for your end customers right now. And they're trying to figure that out. You can be the, the, the Yoda to make them look like a hero. And, and for those teams to really feel good about being able to work in an environment where sometimes you got to work from home, you know, and, and it's weird. And some people like it because they don't want the commute, but there's all these other things to it. But Cynthia or uh, Colin or Ian, anyone want to add anything yeah. to this? Yeah. Colin's got his mic down. He's ready. Got yeah, I'm ready. I'm like <laughs> engaged. Uh, I feel like a some flight commander here where I just work at the gap calling for a skinny pair of jeans for a customer. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ian like that one. Um, yeah, the one thing I want to say here is, is this also like you, you do have to be Yoda. You got to be the guy. Right, whether you're Yoda, Morpheus, I keep thinking about Morpheus, Morpheus. now because Joe keeps talking about that. I'm like, Joe, you need you need the Morpheus costume. But, By the way, Joe cannot be in a webinar without referencing some sort of dystopian movie. Right? But, so, but, but go on. The thing is, is that realize who your target is. Who are you talking to? If you're an MSP and you're working with you know, 10 person clients or 10 and under person on average. Yeah, you, you got to focus on the CEO. If you're hitting up to 20 person, 30, 50, chances are you're not dealing with and working directly with the CEO. I know I wasn't when we were dealing with 50 to 100 or 200 person companies. You got to find out who you can influence and who the right influencers are. So, Because that outcome that they're seeking probably isn't more profit for the company, isn't more revenue for the company, isn't more productivity. It's what makes me look good. What makes me the hero to my boss? So what insights and data and what can you do to leverage things to make them better at their jobs, which makes them look like the hero? And sometimes that can be really minute, easy things. You don't need to think about transforming their whole business. You just got to think about transforming the role for that person. Um, and so, you know, it's all about, for me, is just simplifying down. And once you key into that, you know, if it's the CFO, if it's the office manager, even that's managing IT, like you make that person and you nail making that person the superhero, that takes it forward because then they say, look, this has just happened. Now you can get that extra introduction to the next tier, to the next level and get your seat at the big table. Well, awesome. 
don't uh, don't overestimate the power of that influencer too, right? Colin just mentioned office manager. I'm big in healthcare. I had a meeting yesterday. This was my last meeting yesterday uh, with a client, where the manager said, uh, "I said, hey, just think about it. What's a what's a business problem that's just grinding your gears right now?" And he said, "Well, we've got these uh, we've got these pesky, nasty new patient forms." that are giving us nothing but grief and we can never get people to fill them out on time. And so there's always a delay when a new patient comes in, we can't get new patients in the door quick enough. Thank you for bringing that up. Let's bring in a web developer I know that specializes in secure forms and SQL insertion into, into database. And I know he's worked with your EMR before. We can get this all the way from your website securely right into your EMR. How much time is that going to save you? And he's going to be able to eliminate a payroll position from yeah. this sort of an impact. Well, That's look at how much they hate probably reading people scribble and doing the data entry. Like it's a simple solution that gets rid of something they hate. Errors, things like that, lost sheet of paper, any number of things. Now it's more than just the forty thousand dollar a year position that's going away. This was a massively impactful thing. This is the one thing that that manager, the person who is in control of running this business said, this is my number one problem right now. I'm gonna solve it for him. I'm not even getting paid on this. All this is is an introduction to a guy I know who's gonna do a good job. I'm yeah. the one who did it. I helped you get it done. And so what I'm gonna do the next time I circle around and meet with him in 60 days is, hey, so I hear that's done, what's next? That's so awesome. Yeah, that's, that's how you drive value right there. It's those simple questions. Yeah. It's, it's so huge. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're just, you're showing that you actually care and, and not, it's not going on deaf ears. You're actually doing something about it. You're yeah. taking an action once you yep. hear that. And it's so that, uh, that builds up your reputation, your community too, for clients down the road. Just introduced me to another practice manager and he did it with that story in an email this morning. That's so. cool. That's awesome. <laughs> what happens? That's what that happens. is fantastic. And it had nothing to All do right. with that crisp suit. It had nothing to do with it, you know? Yeah, well, you know, it was gray yesterday, so it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have hit an hour. Um, I don't see any questions right now, but I wanted to go ahead. We're also going to put all these links in the chat so that they're clickable. You can get them opened and um, get some demos on the book so that you can see how our solutions can um, help you out. Um, closing thoughts. Let's start with Colin. Just what, sure. what's your uh i mean I, yeah. I think we've i think we've shown lots of ways you can leverage data ways that you can just you know push your push your business forward with it i'll reiterate selfishly it's garbage in garbage out or quality and quality out you need to make mm -hmm. sure that your main source of truth is clean and accurate data we offer that to you for free at gradient there's no charge there's no you know hidden fees no fine print Get started yourself. Check out what your data health score is with your PSA. Go to meetgradient.com slash check my score. Um, and then in, in celebrating you working towards a PSA so clean you could eat off of, we're offering $20 Uber Eats vouchers um, to everybody that forwards uh, their proof of their sink um, to start cleaning their data to feed me at meetgradient.com. Awesome, awesome. And then Ian, you do some strategic coaching. Um, obviously, you're, you're very passionate about teaching. Um, can you tell everybody a little bit about um, the coaching that you do and the, the system that you coach for? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm a facilitator through the Patterson Center's Stratop uh, methodology, which was developed by a guy named Tom Patterson. If you don't know Tom, that's okay. If you've ever ridden Space Mountain, you can thank him and Roy and Walt Disney. He was involved in that. He helped uh, build out DVDs and ATM pin technology and worked for the legendary Buck Rogers at IBM. So wow. super smart Garf, super, super smart guy. Um, he's passed on now, uh, but Stratop's been around for 40 years. So that's my passion. If uh, you think it might be useful to you or if you just want me to draw some charts on a Teams thing, that's fine. I like to draw. <laughs> So <laughs> I would like some stick figures next time though. If we could just like add some little humans on there, that'd be great. <laughs> or, or you're talking to Joe. Like. All right. And Joe, what yeah, do you have I, to say here in closing? I want to thank uh, the attendees for, for participating. Just by participating, it, it indicates that you're interested in doing more of the data. That's the first step, right? That's so awesome. Yep. And I just want to thank Colin and Ian. Both of you are rock stars. 
Uh, love the fact that we got together to talk about something so important to the community. And with Lion Guard, look, we're about visibility into that data. And that's where we think it begins. Visibility to that technology infrastructure that you're managing that is continuing to be messier and messier, whether it's cloud all the way to end, endpoint, everything in between. Uh, we got to cover, we're going to give you visibility uh, into all of that infrastructure so you can rock your data. So That's do it. Right. Do it all, all right, Cynthia. All right. Um, unless anyone, I don't see any questions. Um, this was so much fun. I feel like I could do this all day. This was great. So much good information. Um, so thank everyone. Thank you to everyone that was here and everyone that's going to probably watch it later. And um, huge thank you to Joe, Ian, and Colin for sharing all of your wealth of knowledge. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye.